Hi, I'm Dick Siegel, uh, Robert W. Hunt Professor of Material Science and Engineering and uh, Director of the uh, Nanotechnology Center at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Our research uh, over the past 14 years uh, in my research group uh, has focused on the interaction of the nanos of nanoscale materials with uh, biological systems in trying to understand why uh, nanostructures are so prevalent in uh, the biological world. And uh, in this work, uh, we have uh, discovered that uh, the uh, interaction of nanostructures with uh, cellular species in the biological world are, uh, of course, uh, modulated uh, by proteins. And these proteins take up new conformations uh, and hence functions uh, in nanoscale environments. Uh, in recent years, we have been focusing on just this very important problem, since it's these, this medi mediation of the interaction between nanostructures and, uh, and uh, biological species that really controls uh, how the interaction takes place and what uh, uh, eventually manifests itself and it's a central issue in the uh, burgeoning area of nanomedicine. The perspective in JCPL uh, that appears uh, this month uh, will uh, give some uh, of our ideas and thoughts upon not only uh, our own work and how it has uh, uh, progressed in the past few years, but how that uh, interacts and intersects really with other people's work around the world. My colleagues, Jim Gagner and Shi Chen, will now tell you uh, more details about what we've been doing and how it will impact uh, the world of nanomedicine going forward. Nanoparticles are synthesized through the careful controls of their morphologies. Yet to make sure the quality of nanobio interfaces, they are therefore also characterized via a variety of methods. For example, we used the electron microscopies to characterize the sizes and morphologies of nanoparticles. And also, we combined the microscopy characterizations with the inductive coupled plasma mass spectroscopy, which could measure the concentration of nanoparticles, uh, so that we could quantitatively determine the surface area per milliliter of nanoparticles. Moreover, we also used the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy and X-ray diffractometer to characterize the surface chemistry and the crystallography of nanoparticles respectively, respectively so that to further make sure the other features of nanoparticles are also under our control. In this way, when we after all did the subsequent characterizations on purely nanoparticle conjugates, we were fully clear about what factors are influencing the adsorbed protein behaviors and thus made our quantitative analysis not only possible, but also reliable. The detail of our quantitative analysis are presented in our recent review paper for the JPCL perspective. A variety of different synthetic techniques are available to control nanoparticle morphology. In many cases, these techniques rely on an in-depth understanding of gold's crystalline structure. For example, through underpotential deposition of silver atoms on the gold surface, it's possible to obtain nanoparticle morphologies such as gold nanocubes or octahedra. For example, the octahedra are bound by 1-1-1 facets, which are often approximated as a flat surface, but in actuality have an atomic energy structure as represented here. This structure then determines the placement of thiolated ligands on the gold surface as shown below. It's also been demonstrated that ligand chemistry can determine the spatial arrangement of ligands on the nanoparticle surface, such as separation into stripes or patches. It's therefore possible to think that by controlling the nanoparticle morphology, and thus the density and spatial arrangement of ligands on the nanoparticle surface, particular conformations could be adopted that will interact with specific modalities in the biological environment as demonstrated by Poon et al. and described in our perspective. But most of all, we're in an exciting period where a wide variety of materials are available, any of which can be selected for a particular desired property, such as surface plasma resonance. Nanoparticles can then be synthesized with precise control over morphology and size, and functionalized with a variety of chemistries, 
in order to control protein absorption and the composition of the protein corona. With these considerations, it's important to realize that the true nature of the nanobio interface cannot be approximated as a hard surface, but is instead a complex structure with many levels over which control could be exerted. <laughs>